Good morning, you guys. It is 10, 16 in the morning. I am starting my morning with a matcha and a little peanut butter and Nutella banana toast. I don't know why, I haven't had this in forever, but I was just craving it, so this is breakfast. Catching up on some work. I did a blog post yesterday about, what was it about? It was about what matcha does Starbucks use? Um, you know, blogs, I've learned a lot starting blogs and it's a lot of work and stuff. But yeah, I'm just kind of trying to fill out my website with some blogs. So these are the three I have right now. And I'm about to catch up on emails and just do some stuff. Okay, you guys, it is 11 in the morning and I just finished getting ready. This is the outfit I'm just wearing. Is my camera dirty? Hold on. Let's see, is that better? Yeah, that's a little better. I'm just wearing some like linen pants and then this brown little cardigan and a brown shirt and a brown hijab. Just a little chocolate moment. Anyways, I am in a hurry, so we're gonna talk in the car. God, my hijab is like everywhere. Let's chat super quickly. All right, so good morning and welcome to another video. We are doing a day in the life of a teacher on fall break, a kindergarten teacher. And let me tell you guys, it is so nice and real. Oh my God, it is, hold on, sorry. It is so windy right now where I live. Literally, the trees are blowing, guys. Like my hijab is all out of place. Anyways, I was just saying that, yeah, it's a day in the life of a kindergarten teacher, a much needed break, you guys. Like, I swear, I feel like my breaks always hit right when you need them. You know, when like teacher burnout is real, when you're burnt out, you're tired, you're exhausted physically, mentally, like they always hit perfectly. And thankfully, where I live, my fall break is a whole week long, which is so amazing. And I'm so thankful. I know a lot of schools only get like two days of fall break. So today is Thursday. I am nearing the end of my fall break, but I've definitely spent the last few days enjoying break, sleeping in, relaxing, like getting to enjoy breakfast with my husband at home. I've been like baking a lot of stuff, taking time to cook dinner, doing my house, doing laundry, just all the stuff. I've been on my housewifey mode and it's actually pretty fun out here. Anyways, but yeah, I've just been enjoying my fall break and today I decided to record a day in my life. So you guys saw me this morning, I made some breakfast and then I sat on my computer to do stuff for my website, emails, just all that stuff. Now I'm meeting up with my sister-in-law. We are going to a coffee shop, kind of bakery place to sit and just work on some stuff. She has, she actually does her student teaching at my school. You've seen her in a few videos now um she has her wedding coming up her engagement party coming up like her engagement photo shoot bridal shower there's so much stuff coming up for her so we're just gonna sit down and kind of plan things and get all the planning out of the way yummy this place is so cute I found a few like cotton skirts I want to try on and then another, honestly they're all skirts that I got to try on. So yeah. Okay, you guys, just finished at the mall. I ended up getting the gray cotton skirt because cotton skirts are in this fall, you guys, and I'm so excited to style it with like a chunky sweater and it'll be so cute. Anyway, I don't really know what to do right now. Do I go home? It's like two o'clock. Yeah, I guess so. You guys, my car was straight up at like four miles, literally four miles. Ah. The wind is just not a hijabi's friend, I swear. Anyways, of course, gotta sanitize. Uh, my husband should have been filling my gas, but I wouldn't have even made it home right now if I kept driving. We are invited to my mother-in-law's for dinner today. I have been cooking y'all like, I feel like I never cook in these videos. No, I, I cook a lot, okay? I was cooking the last three days and you know, she needed a break and we're taking it. Thankfully, I have my mother-in-law and my mom here, so we go there and there often. We shift off kind of every few days, especially when I'm working. I'm at my mom's house like every day. I'm about to pick up a veggie sandwich from like my family's restaurant on my way home because it just sounds so good, like falafel, cauliflower. They put fries, pickles, and like, oh my God, it's so good. So yeah. You guys, this sandwich is absolutely phenomenal. Oh my God, it's so heavy. Ugh, yum. All right, guys, it is around four o'clock. I went this morning out with my sister-in-law. We did some stuff at the coffee shop, as you guys saw. We went to the mall after. I picked up like a little snack. It was a sandwich, me and my husband split it, and then we ate that just now. And now, I mean, like, I just kind of hang out for the day. I don't do much. Um, we're going to my in-laws for dinner. I need to like do stuff around the house, like put the dishes away, which I'll do after we come back. Okay, you guys, it is sunny AF outside. So I'm about to go for a walk, get my hat on. And yeah, go for a walk before we leave to my in-laws. The weather is so nice. Yes, it's so windy, but the weather lately has been like the perfect 70s. And yeah, I'm just wearing a workout jacket and some joggers and let's go take a walk. Okay, 
I'm taking this clip on my phone so it might look a little different, but we are taking a walk. The weather is so beautiful. My husband's in a meeting, so I can't be too loud, but you guys, a moment for like, trying to find good lighting. A moment for these prayer clothes. Look how cute this is. I got this from, wow. I'm literally telling you guys about it and I don't remember the name. I'm gonna put it somewhere on the screen where I got this from. It was a little pricey, okay? It was like $70 for this little prayer dress, but it is silk, you guys, and I love it. Let me scoot back. So, yes. Okay, well, this is what it looks like. And I pray in style and I love it and it's silk and I'm obsessed with it. Okay, let me put you guys on for a moment. I'm touching up my nail polish, but do you guys see like this pink color? It's a sheer pink. I don't know if you can tell that well on camera. Hold on, let me try flipping the camera. Um, it's like a sheer, I really want you guys to be able to see. Anyways, it's like the perfect sheer pink, okay? Anyways, this color, let me put you on on the color. This color is, well, whatever this brand is, Sally Hansen. Hold on, let me let it focus on the on the thing. It's Sally Hansen, okay, and it's in the shade 557. Hold on one second. She's a little slow. 557, and the color is Tool Much. Tool Much. Anyways, perfect sheer pink. But what I'm gonna do is, and I'm gonna put a chromy coat on top because I wanna switch it up a little bit. Hello, you guys. I am home from my in-laws house and I wanted to sit down and do a little Q&A and just chit chat with you guys for a little bit. This is probably like the first sit down kind of answer questions that I've gotten with you guys on YouTube for you guys to get to know me a little more. So we'll just go back to the basics. Obviously, you guys know I'm a teacher. This is my second year of teaching. Um, I am Palestinian. But, you know, OK, pausing what I'm talking about on the side for a second. It's very sad to see what's going on in Palestine right now. I don't know when this video is going to go up. Like, I don't, I don't know what else will happen after this video gets posted. I don't really know what is going to happen. But I just wanted to touch on this topic that what is going on in Palestine right now, and not even right now, what's been going on in Palestine, because this isn't a new issue. This is something that's been going on for years, the genocide, the occupation. Like, it's not, it's not something new, you know? And it's just kind of really sad to see what's going on. And what makes it all worse is, like, everyone here is just kind of watching what's going on through a screen and just having to sit back and watch it. Like... I don't want to say it feels like torture for us because what they're going through is unimaginable, but it's it's a like it's such a heart-wrenching feeling when I say torture of kind of having to just sit back and watch videos of things going on to them over there and it's like little babies and moms and families and it's just so sad and I really wanted to just mention that and put that out there. Anyways, yeah, so I am Palestinian. I have an older sister and an older brother. I got married a year and a half ago to my husband and we are happily married now. We don't have any children yet. I wanna answer some of the questions I've been getting kind of about being a teacher and just general questions that I see often. First question that I get a lot is how I became a teacher and that's just an undergrad degree in college. You know, it's four years, two years, basics, two years. You're kind of, is it called core classes, I think? But yeah, I mean, you do a lot of clinical student teaching and you do a lot of hours at schools to be a teacher. All right, the next question I get is why be a teacher if I get paid so little? Or I guess a lot of people ask kind of what is it like? How do you get paid being a teacher? Is it good money? Why be a teacher if you don't get paid a lot then? Blah, 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 blah. So I, you know, I'm going to be straight up right now. Do teachers get paid the most? No, like it is definitely on the lower end. But I didn't get into this profession for the money. I got into this profession because I love kids. And you know, there's a, always been a teacher short. I feel like a teacher shortage, you know what I mean? So I came into this profession because I know I have a passion for kids, for teaching, and it just felt like the right thing to do. You know, like I, you know, money's not my focus in a job. There's so many people that are making six figures, seven figures in a job, and they're absolutely miserable. And you know that, it's like you don't even enjoy the money at that point, you know what I mean? So the money is never what I look for in a job, and that's the first thing I tell people is don't look for money in a job, because I literally know people my, I shouldn't say who, someone I know has a really well-paying job. She absolutely hated it. She didn't like it. She was working constantly 24 seven. She stopped doing that and she is more than happy right now. But yeah, I mean, why be a teacher if I'm not getting paid a lot? I do it because I love it and I'm here for the kids and being a teacher, you know, we're lacking a lot of people that really love this job and do it out of passion. And that's why I'm here to do it out of passion and be there for the kids. That's especially why I chose kindergarten because they're such a young age. That's kind of like their first stages in learning, first memories of school, that kind of builds and molds if they love school, if they hate school, kind of that beginning path. And that's another reason why I chose kindergarten, specifically kindergarten, because they are just so little and I want 
to be a passionate teacher for them and someone they remember and that kind of is their like their foundation of like loving school and loving learning and you know loving being a kid like oh my god i always try to do experiments in my class and I lost my train of thought for a second, but I was saying I always love to do experiments in my classroom because they're literally five and six. Like, when will they ever get to be five and six again at school? Doing all these experiments and memories, you know, after that, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, and then so on, middle school and high school, like it only goes downhill. Next thing you know, you're writing essays, like applications to college, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just doing as many memories I can with these kids. So kind of rolling off that question, getting to the next question that is, can one live off of being a teacher? Okay. This is a tricky topic that I honestly am not the best person to ask is being a teacher a livable wage because I am like, you know, I'm in a dual income household. I have my job and my husband also has a job. So we're not using my paycheck. Like we don't depend on my paycheck, my paycheck. I'm like, I mean, I don't mind sharing. I save all my money. I don't touch any of it. I'm so thankful to have a dual income household. You know, I work right now, not because I have to, but because I want to. I'm so, so, so thankful every single day that, uh, you know, if I didn't need to work right now, like for example, in a year or two, whenever I get pregnant, inshallah, and we have kids, I obviously will sit home and I won't be working during that time. And I'm thankful that I will be able to depend on my husband to take care of the house and take care of us. So I'm not the most reliable person to answer that. It, the question is being a teacher a livable wage because I'm not in that situation. I can't really answer that. From people I've seen like coworkers around me, it's honestly not and it sucks that it's not. If you ask me, being a teacher is one of the most important jobs. That's why it sucks that we're not paid as well. And then people will put the argument, oh, summer break, oh, winter break. That's not the point though. Like being a teacher, how are people where they are today? The doctors, the lawyers, the blah, 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 on and on and on. Yes, there's successful people that didn't go to school, but I'm saying they all got to where they are because of their teachers. Like being a teacher is such an important role and there's teacher outages. People are leaving teaching because, you know, it's, it's, it, it's overwhelming and they're not getting paid enough. And it's like, I don't blame teachers that are tired. I don't blame teachers that leave this career. But I feel like now seeing I'm getting into like a whole nother, I'm getting into like a whole nother topic right now. But you know, teachers leave this career because it is exhausting because you don't get paid enough. So from the people I've heard and seen around me, it's not the most livable wage. I would say it's more, it's more reliable and enjoyable if you're not fully depending on being a teacher. I also know a lot of teachers who work two jobs. They're a teacher and then after school they go to their next shift, which like, I applaud or I applaud people or mothers that are teachers. There's mothers, so many mothers in my school, they're mothers and then they go home and they take care of their kids after a long day of being with kids. Like it is such an exhausting job to have. It really, really is. And I mean, teachers are superheroes on top of the teachers that are mothers, the teachers that have, not the, mother, the teachers that have two jobs. Like it's literally endless. Being a teacher is an underappreciated career and I think an undervalued career that I wish hopefully soon, sometime soon would be getting paid more to have more teachers stay in the career. You know what I mean? Because there are teachers that love this career. I'm one of those teachers that love this career. There's so many other teachers that I know that love this career. And it's like, it's hard to maintain this career if you know, you're not, you can't live off of it. So summing up everything I just said, is being a teacher a livable wage, a livable career? In my personal experience where I'm not the main provider of my household, yes, in my scenario. But if you are gonna be the head of your household, is being a teacher, the most comfortably financial, financially comfortable job, no. And that's just my opinion, it might be. You might go be the head of your household and you are a teacher and it works out beautifully. And you know what, I'm so happy if you're able to do that, but I'm just kind of giving my opinion on it. Do I get burnt out and how to avoid teacher burnout? Oh my goodness, guys, yes, I get burnt out. Being a kindergarten teacher is exhausting. Like, it's hard to kind of answer all these questions because you know, the answer will vary depending on the age you teach. Teacher burnout is real in kindergarten, but I would say more like mentally, like emotionally draining being a kindergarten teacher because they're so little, like they're needing me all day. And it's always like overstimulation, guys. I'm not even joking. I'm stim overstimulated like 60% of my day. I'm not joking because all day they're like, Missy, 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 blah, 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 blah. This person hit me. This person called me. This person called me like, they'll be like, this person took my toy or like, this is, it's just so many like little things that you kind of have to teach them how to solve in kindergarten. And oh my God, I just don't know if anything I'm saying in all of these Q and A's is making sense. I feel like I'm all over the place. I've never sat and done a Q and A. So I just feel like I'm rambling and like, I don't know. 
Anyways, yes, I get burnt out and like overstimulated as a teacher so much, especially being a kindergarten teacher all day. I mean, they're five, like they need me all day long and it's hard to do this job by myself. I almost wish I had an assistant some of the time. I know in pre-K they have assistants. I kind of wish they had assistants in kindergarten as well. How do I avoid burnout? Honestly, I never stay after school after 4 p.m. Now, again, if you teach probably second grade and higher, at that point, you're grading worksheets, you're grading essays. I don't have much of that. I don't have many worksheets I grade essays. I mean, they don't do that in kindergarten. So there's not much grading I have to do, which I think is a lot of workload off my shoulders personally. Now, if you teach older grades, you know, you probably stay after school or you take work home to grade so you can get it done. I, I don't really have much of an answer there, but I think for the lower grades, a lot of the time I will step back and just, I will leave. When I have stuff to do at school, after school, I will never, rarely stay after school. I'm one of those people, I will come in early before I come in, before I stay after school. So I will always go into work almost every day about 20 minutes early kind of print copies I need to make, kind of look at what I have to do, plan out my week. I use my plan times very diligently. I do not waste them kind of walking around, talking to my coworkers. Like I get my, I use that one hour of plan time to really sit and plan what I need to do for the week, the next week, print copies. Like I plan out everything. I have a little cart in my room and it's labeled Monday through Friday and then next week. And I get all my copies ready. If I have any, I look over my lessons. So how I avoid teacher burnout and kind of how Kind of how I avoid teacher burnout is I use my plan times at school. Like you're already at school, use the time wisely, you know? I use my plan times to really get things done that I need to get done. And then I will rarely stay after school past 4 p.m. because you know, like I'm clocking out, you know what I mean? I need to come home, I need to have my time with my husband, with my family, eat dinner, relax. A lot of my time is spent going on walks, doing things I personally love after school. I go on walks, I go to the gym, I hang out with my friends. Me and my husband sit and watch movies. We watch TV. Like, you know, it's doing those things that kind of help me unwind. Scrolling on TikTok for two hours. Like, those are all things that I make sure after four o'clock, I come home and I have the time to do that stuff. And then I'll worry about school the next day. You know what I mean? I'm at school for eight hours. There is time in that day for me to figure out what I need to do. If there's times where I feel like I'm really behind and I need to catch up, yeah, I will stay after school like an hour. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like in general, I have a... I would say more of a positive experience out of being a teacher. I know for some people, like it was absolutely miserable for them being a teacher. And you know what? I'm so sad that it has to be like that because there's so many great teachers out there that just can't be in this profession anymore. And I'm so, so, so thankful that I'm having a good experience being a teacher. You know what I mean? Because everything I just said would completely change if you have a bad group of kids or if you have like you know what I mean? Also, it depends on your group of kids. It depends on your staff. It depends on your admin. Do you have great support around you? Do you have great coworkers? Do you have people you're friends with around you? Do you have a good group of kids? Like uh, everything could have changed in my answers if any of that was different. I'm so thankful I have a good school. I'm so thankful I have happy, like, I'm so thankful I have good coworkers that I'm actually friends with and I'm so thankful I have a good group of kids. So I hope I was able to help in some way for any of the teachers out there. I don't know how much I just rambled if anything I said made sense, but I hope it did. And yeah, moving on. You guys, it is way later. It is like the end of the night now. It's 9.30, which after nine, I start unwinding. I'm not really a night person, a night owl. Even on fall break, even on the weekends, I like to just kind of sit home and relax. So yeah, I mean, this is how I'm gonna spend the rest of my night hanging out on the couch, just chilling in my cozy blanket, watching some TV and on my phone. And yeah, I'm gonna edit this video and I will see you guys next time.